Hi, I'm Dan Salzberg with Big Brand Water Filler. In this video, we're going to talk about reverse osmosis storage tanks. Off to my side here, I have a 4-gallon tank, and then up above me on the shelf is a 20-gallon tank. Both of these are used with residential or light commercial reverse osmosis systems. Often on the larger tanks, we'll have a larger connection. There's a 3 quarter inch connection on that tank, and a quarter inch connection on this residential tank. I'm going to pull this tank out so we can take a better look. On top here, you'll see the quarter inch connection, and it's stainless steel. We're going to connect our tank ball valve right here. Water goes in and out in the same connection out of this quarter inch stainless steel connection here on the top of the tank. On the side of the tank is a Schrader valve, just like the valve on your car or bicycle tire. This is where we put air in the tank. Now the way this tank works is that it's a metal can and inside is a rubber bladder. It's a butyl rubber, FDA approved, and totally safe to drink out of. It is BPA free. The Metal can surrounds that bladder, and then inside the metal can is the air. When the tank fills with water, that bladder blows up like a balloon, and that compresses the air. And then when you open the faucet, that air pressure is what causes the water to flow out of the tank to the faucet. So it's really important that we make sure there's enough air in this tank. I pulled this one out of the box, and it only had 6 PSI to begin with. So what I did is I used our air compressor over here with a connection, just like what you would use for your car or bicycle tire and I put more air into the tank. And then what I can do is put the tank on the shelf here and take a larger gauge, it's easier to read, and check that pressure. And we've got 10 PSI in the tank now. There's a few reasons why you can get low delivery pressure. The first and most obvious is that the tank is low on air. And what causes that is just over time, the tank leaks a little bit of air, just like your car or bicycle tire would do. So it's really important that when you do your filter changes, you check the pressure in your tank. The other common things that can cause low pressure are just the fact that there's low pressure going into the reverse osmosis. A lot of people don't realize that the tank is only going to fill to about 60% of the incoming line pressure. So if you had 50 PSI, let's say, coming from the city, you would only get about 30 PSI in your tank. One way to alleviate that issue is to add a permeate pump, like you see in the system up here. That's this turbine pump up here above the system, and what that's doing is it's using the energy of the wastewater to pump the product water into the tank. The wastewater is typically coming out three to four times as fast as the product water. So that causes the pump to turn, and that pulls the water out of the membrane and pushes it into the tank. Then I run my wastewater through this yellow line here, and this goes out into the garden to the drip irrigation. So I don't waste any water that way. Another thing you can do to improve your tank delivery pressure is to use larger tubing. All of our systems since maybe 2002 have come with 3 8 tubing from the tank to the faucet, whereas a lot of older systems only use quarter inch tubing. The 3 8 tubing gives you a greater flow at the same pressure, and that really becomes important when you're doing long runs. Now on this run here, I'm using about 80 feet of tubing, so I've gone to half inch. I have a 20 gallon tank up on the shelf, the water goes in and out in the 3 quarter inch connection, First, when it comes out of the reverse osmosis, we do a remineralization filter to correct the pH and add back some calcium and magnesium. Then we go through a UV system and into the tank. On the way out of the tank, in half-inch tubing, it goes through here to our carbon polishing filter. It's a 20-inch instead of a 10-inch filter. And then up the wall into pharmaceutical-grade 316 medical stainless tubing into the kitchen. Once it gets in the kitchen, it tees off below the floor one line goes behind the refrigerator for the ice cubes and the cold drinking water. Another line goes under the sink where I have a cold faucet and then on the other side a faucet with an ozone system to disinfect. And then also up behind the stove to the pot filler so I can fill pots of water to cook with. Height is a big issue when you come to reverse osmosis delivery pressure. A lot of people are putting their systems in a basement and then they're trying to deliver water to the first or second floor. And there's a rule of thumb that 2.31 feet equals 1 PSI. So if you were to go uphill 23 feet, that would be 10 PSI. Now if you go back to your application where you had city water with 50 PSI and you're only getting 60% of that in the tank, you only had 30 to begin with, then you've gone up 23 feet, now you've only got 20 to begin with. And now if that tank is only halfway full and you have 15 PSI in it, and that 10 feet that you lost going up the feed from the basement to the first or second floor, now you're only at 5 PSI. So putting your tank up high can make a big difference. And then the last thing you can do is to add a delivery pump. Typically delivery pumps are put between the tank and the faucet, and what they do is they boost that tank pressure. 
they're based on pressure and they have a 40-60 switch. And when that line drops below 40, such as when you open the faucet, the delivery pump turns on. And when the line reaches 60, it shuts off. So what that does is from the time your tank's totally full till it's totally empty, you could have only two, two PSI in the tank, you're going to get 60 PSI coming out of the faucet. This concludes our video on reverse osmosis storage tanks. If you have any further questions, please check our website, www.bigbrandwater.com, or give one of our friendly technicians a call, and we'll explain it all to you.